What's up, y'all? I got a banger from men only. Let's get straight into it. Some of these men genuinely don't care to get to know you. They just want to experience you. So let's talk about it. Unfortunately, a guy can literally do the right things, can say the right things, can communicate, can take you out on dates, literally everything, only for him to actually not give a fuck about you. And this is why it's important to have enough discernment in yourself and confidence and security that you know exactly what you want and what you're looking for and that you don't settle for someone's dusty, crusty, musty ass son. If you don't have pure intentions- Whoa! Dusty, crusty, musty, hit him with the triple threat there. <laughs> for me, at least communicate what you're looking for. So if it aligns with what I want, then we can go about it. If not, guess what? How about you ladies don't wear makeup on the first date? Keep it real with us. We'll keep it real with you. But the thing is, you're, you're wearing all this stuff that makes you look so fake, but you want us to keep it real? I think not. I'm gonna let you do your thing and I'm gonna move on. Crazy to me because a lot of these men actually want to humble very confident, secure women, women that take care of themselves mentally, physically, financially, emotionally, women that literally spend time and money on their looks, all because of what? Because they want to experience you as a person, because they want to experience the life that you're living, maybe the looks that you have, the body that you have. Our generation has gone to shits. Well, that's why women wear makeup and men lie. It's because we know what you ladies want to hear. That's why you wear makeup. You know we want to see something that's not real. And you want to hear something that's not real. <laughs> I mean, am I making this up, chat? Let me know. Nothing is ever that genuine anymore. People always have some ulterior motive. And it's like, at least communicate what your motive is. It's important for us ladies to take our Yeah, like that would work. Like, hey, um, I'm only taking you out on a date because I want to beat your cheeks. <laughs> like that would seriously work. Like, come on, chat. Loki, does somebody want some beef jerky? Come over here. Go to your place. He just got a bath, so he got a little scarf and everything. Got him some beef jerky. You know, I got to take care of my boy. Time with what we're looking for. Here's the thing. Women are doing this too. I mean, the thing is, when you when you go about the dating market this way, it's so transactional. So tit for tat, right? You give me this, I give you this. What happened to just being genuine? Does what she, does her aesthetic look genuine? I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck. If I came across a woman that looked like this, I would automatically put you in the high maintenance bucket. And chat, let me know what you think about this take right here. I don't like to date women that are high maintenance. I don't. They're expensive, they're usually a headache, and you can never please them. But chat, let me know. Do you look for women that are high maintenance? I like low maintenance chicks. When I met Cass for the first time, she wasn't wearing any makeup. And she was in like a big t-shirt and Calvin's. I was like, yes. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you. I want, I want a girl that just keeps it real. And when you have all this superficial stuff going on, it just tells us that you're insecure, number one. But number two, it tells us that you're high maintenance and you're probably expensive. Like she's got the white nails, the long hair, the makeup. It looks like she has veneers, maybe even a nose job, maybe some lip fillers. It's like, honey, every a lot of this stuff on you is fake, but you want us to keep it real. It's just not going to happen. That's why I say women are marketers and men are salesmen. Lady, if you're attracting a certain type of guy that you don't like, more than likely you're marketing to the wrong type of man. This is why I say the common denominator in all these relationships, ladies, that you have is you. So if you want something to, something to change, go to the bathroom, look in the mirror, and change that. Change the image of yourself first before you think about anybody else. Three things that I've learned from dating this year, and I think if you can understand these things, you're going to be less disappointed in your dating life. Because I know for me... What I love is that it's always the single women giving the most advice. <laughs> What I've learned from dating this year, still single, still alone, but wants to give everybody else advice. It's like, <laughs> isn't your advice advice bad? Stupid. Most of my frustration has come from not, or like feeling like my expectations aren't being met. And you can't your expectations are too high. Here's a good quote for you. When expectations are met and or, or when expectations are set and then they're not met, people get upset. And that's what's happened to these modern women right now. I really have expectations, honestly. Number one. Do not trust a single word that comes out of this man's mouth. You can only trust actions. This one's kind of crazy to me because you would hope that people mean what they say and are reliable, but I don't know. We would hope that you ladies look like what we're seeing. Shots fired! But more than likely you have a bunch of makeup on, so we're not even getting it. We're not even getting a real face card. Point number one kind of rolls into point number two, and that is until you have a date, a time, and a location, there is no date. And even once you have all of that set, there still might not be a date, okay? You need to get confirmation, and until they are standing in front of you, you should have backup plans. Number three is trust your intuition. I don't know how intuition works. It's crazy. I feel like I almost know immediately. 
trust something that you don't even know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Immediately, if something's going to happen with someone or not, every time that I've ignored my intuition and I've just hoped that these guys would prove me wrong, it's always been a disaster. Your body will literally reject someone if they're not good for you. Again, I don't know how it works, but trust your gut. Here's the thing. No, nah, he's trying to trust your guts, honey. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't. Three things you've learned from dating. It tells me that you just, you pick bad men. You're going after chads that don't want to date you. And the thing is, ladies, if he's good enough for you, he's good enough for a few. Put it on a freaking t-shirt. That's what I don't think these, a lot of these modern women understand is that like, that like, if he's meeting all of the criteria that you would give him any attention, more than likely he's meeting the criteria of a bunch of other women. So what makes you special in that regard? I mean, she was cute, right? She was all right looking. Give her like a six, maybe an eight if she's real dolled up, had the symmetrical face, the blue eyes. Cool. But that's only that's only one aspect. That's only one third of what really gets a man to fall in love with you. Here, here's my philosophy on this. It's three things that can get a, really get a man's attention. Number one is your appearance. That gets our attention. Number two is your personality. That keeps our attention. And number three is your character. And that's what makes us fall in love with you. If you're missing two thirds... Two thirds of this entire equation, more than likely, you're going to attract guys that just want to be, you know, attracted to your appearance. And that's going to be more of a physical relationship. It's not going to be something that's intimate or emotional or romantic. So, ladies, work on your personality just as much, much as you work on freaking putting all that war paint on. You do that, and more than likely, you'll procure a guy that's a little bit of higher value that meets your expectations. But that's just me. I care what you don't want to do. I didn't want you to cheat on me, but you did. You can't, you constantly saying cheating, 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 cheating. But why was I cheating? Why wasn't that, I with I, you? I, it don't even matter why? no more. Why, why? Wasn't because you wasn't there. there. You act like you do not want a family. I you act like you don't want to get married. All you want to do is shower me with okay, money, cars, and stuff all these like that. Console, I want go, kids. Leave, I want a family. Okay, I want love. And we're going to have, have that. And no, we're going to have that. You're the one who's the Mario is out the question. He's out the question. Mario's child is in your stomach. What are you talking about? And you're going to take care of it. I'm not taking care of it. Why? Why can't you take care of it? That's not my kid. Why am I taking care that I did not make? That makes zero sense. You can't take care of the child. Why, why don't you to. want to take care of the child? Because he's not mine. He or she he is, is not mine. I, I, bro, it's a go boy. In the car. It's a boy. That's cool. It's Junior. Your boy. Junior. Yeah, Mario Demar Jr. No. Junior. <laughs> <laughs> the lie detector determined that was a lie. Oh, oh Junior. That's not my baby. Oh, no. We're going to call bro, him Dwayne I'm, Junior. I'm Junior. You. Can you go in the car, please? Look, I'm not trying mind. to hear that. I'm not trying to hear that. We need I'm to go in the house. We can send you you got me arguing outside with these families. See, go this in is the car, then. You, see, the you car see what I'm saying? You got me doing all this ghetto mess. Bro. Ghetto mess. You cheated on no, me with my homeboy. We've been cool since seventh grade. You... We done all went to homecoming okay, together. Okay, that's fine. That. That's who you decided to have a kid with. Not even a stranger, though, my homeboy. Because what have you... All I'm telling you, all you do is send me money, buy me this, buy me that. Right, that's what everyone wants. What are you complaining for? Because like, I, want want kids. I want kids. All he does is send you money. Man, I wish I had that. <laughs> I wish I had somebody that just sent me money and then complained about it, boy. You're about this is why I say being a simp doesn't ever work. Money doesn't solve it. Women always want more. They're hypergamous. They want to have the relationship. They want to have the money. They want to have the status. They want to have the looks. This is why you sometimes you got to go back and forth with these women just to keep them enticed. You can never give a woman everything that she wants. Look at the famous soccer player, Kaká. His wife left him because she said he was too perfect. What? Too perfect? Are you kidding me? This is why you can't give them like that. That's like when women ask for things sometimes, even though you're, you'd be cool with getting it, just tell her no. Tell her no. Oh, I want this. No. Why not? Because I said. Point blank, period. Doing that allows them to have that push and pull though and then lets them look at you like oh he's above me but if you just give her everything she wants this is the way she's going to treat you she's going to go out there and get pregnant by another man and name him a junior and hope <laughs> and hope that you raise him that's unreal but have so a kid family so go in the I car and go be family. with the man that you about to have a kid we're going to have this family no, I'm not, no, I'm not she wants to have family you please stop walking you just turn around I'm, turn around go in the car no we're going to get you're in the house you're about to have a child we're with my homeboy I don't want nothing to do with you go get in the car delete my number block me I'm Okay, this is a lot. That's crazy work, bro. That's crazy work. Chat, let me know what you would do. For me, it'd be over. Immediately. 
It's immediately over. There's no way you can come back and, and reconcile uh, reconcile a relationship like this. Absolutely no way, bruv. It's 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 a wrap. It's over. Because they'll be like, we're biologically stronger. We're we're biologically we're stronger than women. Well, we in are. point of fact, they are. But I'm sure that one isn't saying that just to state the obvious. Yeah. I'm sure that one has a point to make in regards to why one thinks that that is funny. And then like one bad thing happens in their lives. Oh, here we go. This little narrative. Like God forbid their parents get divorced when they're twelve. Or like someone cheats on them and they're like, I'm never, no, I'm actually never going to. Bro, she looks like if Lord Farquaad was her uncle. Shots fired! Actually, that's my whole personality now. And actually, I'm going to be mean to everyone in my life because, because of what Rebecca did when we were 17. And I'm like, yes, you're so strong. You strong, ugh, you strong man. Who else? Knows? Love it when a woman tells her about Lord. She's a runner, she's a track star. She's talking about Jason or Chad, maybe. Notice that delectable little bit of irony in which that individual has apparently failed to notice the ever-increasing popularity over the years of many individuals, and that includes women as well as men, using an event or events in their lives that they consider to be traumatic and making it the entire focal point of their entire life, if not the basis of their personalities. But I understand that it is absolutely so much easier to focus on men in these cases because that is what is popular, as opposed to noticing that individuals, instead of trying to heal from their traumas and learn from them, are allowing them to fester and grow and are not being able to heal from them. Here's the reality. What is... I mean, this... <laughs> this girl right here, man. Come on, like, bro. Like, come on, honey. Really? Lord Farquaad, come on, stop it. They always come back. Wait, 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 I need wait, your wait, guys. Wait, 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 Vulnerable. Accountability goes both ways, and it's time for women to realize that their attitudes and expectations play a huge role in how men respond emotionally. They always come back. I need your guys' opinion on this story because I'm very, very torn. And for those of you that have been following me for a bit, this is a very full circle moment. So earlier this year, I was coming off of a kind of situationship breakup. I had been dating this guy for like she's a runner, she's a track star. Six, seven months, and he didn't really want to commit. We just kind of hit this point of like, what's going on here? Why waste seven months with someone if they don't want to commit? Stupid. <sighs> That's why I don't feel bad. Like this guy told you from the jump, I don't want anything, but you just locked in for seven months hoping he would eventually wife you. If he told you no, take that as a no. And I ultimately walked away and I was feeling good about it um, and true. hadn't been dating or anything for a couple months. And then I met this guy and I it was the first time I felt like, oh, I'm really excited about someone in a while. This man happened to be six foot eight. <laughs> so, Giant. So, um, that's what I think when I was talking about him, it was like that six foot eight man. Um, yeah, um, six foot eight guys get a lot more attention than us shorties, uh, the six foot two gents. What's crazy is going to high school, I, I some of my best friends were like on the basketball team. Dudes were like six, 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 seven, and six, eight. Bro, when I went out with them, I looked short. <laughs> and I'm six, two, bro. We went on, our first date was so good. It was drinks and then dinner and really good conversation. Ah. And then our second date was a movie and it was really cute. It was like holding my hand. It was very- Wait, a, little, a little Netflix and chill. What do you mean movie? Where was this movie at? Very just sweet. Um, and then the communication and he had been texting me like almost every day, just checking in and just, you know, sweet things, nothing too over the top. Um, and then he was leaving town for this like work retreat thing. And the last text that he sent was like, okay, I'm going out of town, this like work retreat thing. Um, I'll send you pictures when I'm there. And I'm like, okay, like have fun. Can't wait to see. And the weekend goes by, nothing. Monday goes by, nothing. So Tuesday, I gave it like until the afternoon, still nothing. And this was this was especially odd just because of how much we were talking before. So I He love bombed you, honey. <laughs> You've been love bombed. I just had like a really bad feeling. I was also coming off of this thing with the, the guy that I was dating, the tech CEO dude, who I felt like his communication was just so inconsistent and I had to 
and I, yeah, I just, and I, I told this man that, that like that was kind of my boundary because of all that. So I ended up sending him this text and a lot of you disagreed with this text. Um, basically where I said, hey, you know, I've noticed a big shift in the communication. I'm not really sure what that was, but. Um, He's not that into you. That's what it is. You know, like for me, like that doesn't really work for me and what I need, blah, blah, blah. Said something and then I said, wish you the best. Looking back, I should not have said, wish you the best, because it definitely sounded like I'm closing the door in his face. Yeah. I didn't mean for it to come across like that. I wanted it, you know, I think look, looking back, obviously I wanted him to be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, give an explanation, want to meet up, want to... And I... Stage five clinger, boys. Ladies, we don't have to justify what we're doing when we're not your man, okay? We're not dating. Why would I explain what I'm doing if you're not my broad, chat, let me know. If a girl was expecting you to keep her updated, I mean, she's got a face only a mother could love. <laughs> but if she was expecting you to keep her updated, text her constantly, and she's not even your girl, and then she hits you with some of that, bro, I'm out. If you're going to show me the psycho that early, think about what it's going to be like when you get in a relationship with her. It's going to be tenfold, buddy boy. Like, I'm good. You don't have any right to, like, hold me to any standard. I'm not your man. I'm not your boy. <laughs> I barely even know you. This is one of these women. They, they they play these heavy hands. She's trying, you know, she's trying to win this game of poker, and she's got, well, she's got a pair of twos. It's like, honey, you don't have enough yet. I got nothing. He basically said, um, "Have a good life." Yeah, I just thought we didn't need to like talk as much as we were before. Um, I was gonna text you today and ask how your like St. Patrick's Day weekend was, but you know, you said was she the best? Like you're, I guess. Not much more to say here, so yeah. Wish and the thing is, guys that know their value aren't going to fight for these women. What did you expect? Him to pick up his shield and armor and sword and say, I'm going to fight for her. No, we don't even know you. She the best too or something like that. That was that. I... Would hit her with that future text. Wish you the best, love. <laughs> XX. <laughs> didn't really mean to end things like that. Um, That's what you get. But he really didn't try to fight for it or anything. Which I love it. I, I love it. They want you to fight. Fight for what? I don't even know you. Really realized I was testing him. Now, you know, growth moment. Okay. Like, I can see how it was that. But then, two weeks later, I did not share this with you guys because it was a little, a little desperate. Two weeks later, I was still bothered by it. And I texted were. him and said, hey, I just want to, like... Like, you know, I didn't really mean to come across as harsh with that wish you the best as it did. I, yeah, like, um, you know, I was obviously, like, feeling a certain type of way, but blah, 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 like, and, and I... I love it when a woman gets to the point. <laughs> it's my favorite. I gave him the chance. I, I opened the door. And he never responded. As he shouldn't have. I would have ghosted you, too. Chat, let me know. Would you have ghosted her? Bro, when did you, it, chat, let me just keep it a buck with you guys. When she shows her crazy to you, believe it. Believe her 100%. If she's going to show you the stage five clinger vibes this early from the jump, this is the first quarter, first minute of the game, and she's showing you the crazy, look at these eyes. Those are crazy eyes. When she shows you her crazy, believe her. If she's going to say, wish you the best, I'd say, you too, love, XX. Adios, amigos. I'm done. I'm not putting up with this. We have no titles. There are no expectations you can put on me. I am not your man. So, I was like, okay, you know, I did everything I could. I just remember back in my day when a woman would actually communicate what she wanted with you. She wasn't playing these childish games. She shot it straight, boy. Those days are dead and gone. I can't look back and regret anything. Now I just have to move on. And yes, I know it was only two dates, but I just had a really good feeling with this guy and it seemed very mutual. So, you know, I thought like it was something worth fighting for and sucking up my pride and sending that text and just seeing and I didn't that get was any sucking up your pride. <laughs> <laughs> that was you fighting for it. <laughs> Why do we got to fight? Are you a UFC fighter? Why are we fighting? Think back. So that was that was that months 
months and months and months go by. I've moved to New York. I am in a very different, whatever. Saturday, I wake up to a text at 7 a.m. from this man saying, hey, what are you up to today? Trying to get you back on the roster. <laughs> man, he must have just been in a dry spell. That's all that is. We've done it. I've done it before. S send him that, that 2 a.m. text, sup. <laughs> you know what time it is. One, this man woke me up so early and I couldn't go back to sleep because of the anxiety then about getting that text. And then two, I was just like, what in the... H-E double hockey sticks? So in my head, I'm like, do I respond? Do I not? Do I just like, what? but I still wanted so many answers. Well, is it worth fighting for? Then I guess you should text him back. That I never got and the closure. So I'm like, I'm spinning. Like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a part two. I'm gonna, sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm making a part two. Go to the part two. Here's the thing. He's just not interested. Stupid. So dumb. Just don't play these games. Bro, if a girl shows you a crazy believer, don't play the games, man. I had I had an instance like this happen in college where um I was bucking this girl for probably like I don't even know a few months, but she cheated on her boyfriend to get with me already a no no and I already knew can't wife her up can't date her because I'm next on the chopping block so I knew recreational use only right I'm just gonna ride it till the wheels fall off. One day she sees that I'm texting another girl while she got a man by the way, and she's like I can't do this anymore. You're talking to her I can't I can't do this anymore. And I was like, I bid you adieu. Totally fine with me. Sounds good. Walked her out. I'll never forget this. Walked her out to the porch and I said, all right, bye. She left. Guess who came knocking back two weeks later? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you can't make it up. You think I hit her up? No. I was like, on to the next. More fish in the sea. I had a roster at the time, though. I was in college, bro. That's what I, I kept six or seven at a time. I was, I was, I was in the circus, basically, just juggling. <laughs> juggling um looking back shouldn't have done it but i'm kind of glad i did because i got it out of my system but this girl came crawling back after two weeks because i knew she would i knew she would she wanted to end it i said cool but when i did that what did it do to her mentally she goes he was just okay letting me go he didn't want to fight for it so that made her feel inferior because she was hoping the hy hy hypergamy wanted her to kick in and say, no, he needs to fight for me. I know I'm dating a guy, but I want him to put me first. I was like, no, 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 no. You're third, fourth place at best, boo-boo. Not fighting for you. You got a man. You're cheating on your man to get with me. You belong to the streets. She's a runner. She's a track star. <laughs> why, would I, why would I try to wife you? <laughs> what do I look like? I'm dumb? Stupid. Come on, bro. You can't make this stuff up. But Loki, did you have a good time today? Oh, shout out to you guys, man. We hit 100K subscribers. You guys are for real. I'm going to do a live stream this week. I'll keep you guys updated. Hop in the Discord if you want an update on when we will do that. Uh, but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality Makes You Irresistible to Women and Respected by Men. But I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.